Well, hello, my AI wizard. People keep feign AI of moving past token and even past LLM. That's partly true, but the real story is more interesting. In the next few minutes, you'll learn how different AI models profit information, work their best at, and why that changes everything from speed to capability. Let's start with the word everyone throws around, tokens. Most language models don't read text like humans do. They usually break text into token, chunks of characters or subwords. That's useful because it gives the model a manageable set of building blocks for learning pattern, predicting the next piece of text, and generating coherent output. Now, when we say LLM, we mean large language model. An LLM if a system trains primarily on text, it would become extremely good at language task. Writing, summarizing, translating, coding, explaining, and reasoning through problems using Word. The classic way an LLM generates is autoregressive. It predicts the next token, then the next, then the next, building a response step by step. So why do people say AI won't need tokens anymore? Because there are newer approaches that reduce or remove the need for a traditional token algorithm. Instead of splitting text into a fixed vocabulary of tokens, some models can work directly from bytes or characters and form their own internal grouping. This can make them more robust, especially with unusual words, spelling, multiple languages mixed together, or weird formatting. But here's the important point. Tokenizer free doesn't mean sequence free. Even if you don't use a classic token vocabulary, the model still processes information as a sequence internally. It's still learning patterns over ordered data, just using a different representation at the impler. Next, let's talk about model engine. Most famous LLMs are built on transformers. Transformers use a mechanism called attention, which lets the model relate different parts of the input to each other. That's powerful for understanding context and connecting ideas. The trade-off is that attention can get expensive as the input gets longer, so long context can cost more compute. That's why you're hearing about alternatives like state space models, sometimes associated with names like Mamba. The key idea is efficiency on long sequences. Instead of attention comparing everything with everything, these models can behave more like high-performance sequence processors, often scaling more smoothly as sequences get longer. In practice, many modern systems experiment with hybrid, combining transformer strengths with more efficient sequence components. Then there's another route entirely, diffusion language models. Classic hourland generation is like writing one word at a time from left to right. Diffusion style generation is different. It starts from a noisy or partially masked representation and then refines it through multiple steps until it becomes clean, coherent text. If a different processing style with different trade-offs, sometimes better global consistency, sometimes more iteration and compute. And many diffusion language approaches still operate over discrete symbols, so no tokens isn't guaranteed there either. Now let's shift from language to vision. A vision model is designed to understand images and sometimes video. Two of the most important families are CNNs and VITs. CNN stands for Convolutional Neural Network. CNNs learn visual patterns in layers. Early layers detect edges and simple textures. Later layers detect parts of objects and then whole objects. CNNs are efficient and widely used for tasks like image classification, object detection, and segmentation, especially where speed matters. VIT stands for Vision Transformer. A vision transformer breaks an image into small squares called patches and processes those patches with transformer-style reasoning. VITs are strong at capturing global relationships, how distant parts of an image relate, and they often scale very well with more data and compute. So where do our men sit in? LMN usually means large multimodal model. Multimodal means it can handle more than one type of data, like text plus images and sometimes audio or video too. A common design is a vision encoder converts the image into a representation and then a language model uses that representation to answer questions, describe the scene, interpret charts, or reason about what's in the image. So here's the clean way to think about it. If your job is mainly language, writing, summarizing, coding, an LLN is the core tool. If your job is purely vision, detecting objects, classifying images, often you can use CNNs or VITs without needing an LLM. If your job is combining them, like understanding screenshots, reading diagrams, 
answering questions about a picture, or describing video, then you want an LMM, because it's built to connect vision understanding with language reasoning. Now back to the original claim. AI doesn't need tokens or LLMs anymore. The truth is, we're not seeing a single replacement. We're seeing a diversification. Some models change the input representation, moving from tokens to bytes or patches. Some models change the processing engine, transformers, state space models, hybrids. Some models change the generation method, auto-regressive versus diffusion style refinement. And many real-world systems use the best model type for the job. Vision models for vision, language models for language, and multimodal models when you need both. So the big shift isn't that tokens vanish overnight. It's that AI systems are getting better at choosing the right representation and the right architecture, making them faster, more robust, and more capable across different tasks. That's the modern landscape. Not one model to rule them all, but a toolkit. Each model family optimized for different kinds of understanding and processing.